Welcome good people, my name is Joel Collier and today we're going to talk about what is indigeneity and ultimately how do I address it in SIM, Structural Equation Modeling Software. So before we kind of jump into it, let's talk about what is indigeneity itself. Because oftentimes you'll hear this uh, term kind of thrown around uh, in regards to um, is your model actually um, viable is there a problem with indigeneity or in essence um, does your uh, independent variable is it really the true influencer of your dependent variable or is there really something else that's kind of causing it so how do I know that your independent variable is actually the one that's you know having that influence and this indigeneity usually kind of arises because your independent variable in your model is oftentimes correlated with the error term of your dependent variable uh, and when that happens there's an assumption that well maybe there's you know something else out there that's actually kind of driving that influence to your dependent variable maybe it's not the IV uh, and oftentimes you'll want to try to establish indigeneity too especially if you're trying to kind of uh, kind of support causal causality in your model and so one of the things that um when it comes to ingenuity is it's like well what causes this and there's usually kind of two things that cause this one is what they call an omitted variable bias so maybe there's this kind of important variable that's kind of missing and it's really kind of the true predictor of your dependent variable so in this little simple model here with a and b maybe there's this omitted variable that influences a but it also equally influences b and maybe that omitted variable is really kind of, if you want to think about it, the quote unquote true uh, independent variable that's influencing B. Maybe it's not A, and that we just have this kind of omitted uh, variable that's out there. Another cause is what they call simultaneity, um, which is variable A causes uh, B, but in re retrospect, B causes A, and now there's a kind of a question of directionality of like which way does it actually going to flow to really kind of establish which one is influencing the other. The To give you some uh, context here with ingenuity, let's use kind of a simple example here. So let's say we're talking about uh, baseball, uh, youth baseball, and we want to figure out, you know, what influences kind of kids' performance in ba their baseball games. And what we figured out is, is the number of practices they attend, uh, we think is positively going to influence their performance in games. So the IV's attendance and the DV's performance in games. You know, but how do we know that attendance of practices is actually what's, you know, causing performance? Maybe it's actually something else. Maybe that's not it at all. Well, a way that we can actually uh, try to assess this is by including what's called an instrument variable uh, and an instrument variable is correlated with your independent variable but should be somewhat completely unrelated to the dependent variable so using our baseball example an instrument variable we could use is let's just say distance from the ball field the distance from their home to the ball field uh, the player well, that might have a you know an influence specifically with how many practices they attend. You know that makes sense, but it probably distance from the ball field has really no relationship with how well they perform in games. Um, and so that would be kind of an instrument variable we could use to try to assess if indigeneity is there. And the way that we do that is is by looking at uh, what they call kind of a two-stage least squares analysis. Uh, and it's with this uh, instrument variable. So in stage one, what we're going to do is we're going to do kind of a regression of uh, the IV from the instrument variable. So like attendance of practice now is kind of the dependent variable. Uh, and that's going to equal, if we look from a form formulaic perspective, like it's going to equal beta naught plus the regression coefficient of that distance from the ball field to attendance, you know, plus error. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take that beta naught and that regression coefficient, you know, from distance from the ball field. And now we're going to form kind of a new variable, uh, which is going to be attendance hat, which is, an, you know, an estimate, if you will, 
based on that regression from distance. And so taking that attendance hat kind of variable, we're now going to go into stage two and do a regression of our ultimate dependent variable, but with that new regression variable we just calculated, that attendance hat. So now we would have performance of games as our dependent variable, plus our intercept, plus the regression coefficient of attendance hat, you know, plus our error. And what happens is if we run this and we find that attendance hat, the coefficient is significant, well then now we've got uh, at least some some good indication that attendance of practices does, does have that kind of influence to performance in games. Uh, that that is, you know, some assurance that it is a uh, independent influence to that performance of games. Now this example here was pretty simple because we only had one IV and one DV but will this work with SIM? Um, well it gets a more complicated because usually we don't have just one dependent variable we have multiple dependent variables so will that still work? Well let's take a look. So I've got a, uh, a simple SIM model uh, and one of the things too that you have to be mindful of when you do that kind of two-stage least squares is it, it's kind of treating everything as a composite variable too. So in SIM one of the advantages is, is you can uh, model measurement error, the indicators. Well you can't really do that in that instance. So it basically forms kind of composite variables. You're forming an average of all of your indicators and forming kind of one one variable from it. And so you can see in this simple model right here, and this came from a restaurant setting, uh, all the, the variables have a comp for composite variable on the front of it. But this was uh, in a restaurant setting where uh, did the server adapt their service you know, to me when I went in there? Uh, and did that lead to delight uh, or trust in the, uh, the provider? And then did delight lead to more... Uh, kind of tolerance to future failures if something happened or even delight lead to more kind of what we call positive word of mouth and subsequently did trust lead to those two dependent variables too. So we've got one IV you know in all intents and purposes four DVs but these DVs in the middle the kind of the mediating properties somewhat in regards to sim take on properties of independent variables for these subsequent dvs well can i use that kind of instrumental variable approach that two two stage least squares to assess indigeneity there well here's the issue that you're going to run into i would have to have an instrument variable between adapt and delight in that instance I would have to have an instrument variable down here with adapt to trust I would have to have an instrument variable right here right here between those two between that relationship and between those you know so you're talking about including a possible you know six instrument variables in there and that's not even including like if there was mediation properties you'd probably have to include even more and subsequently, even if I had an instrument variable right here, that doesn't take into effect the influence of the original IV if it's just looking at a simple kind of regression through that instrument uh, variable. So the answer is, no, it's not a good alternative to assess indigeneity through that two-stage least squares because there's multiple DVs and subsequently some DVs retrospectively act as IVs, you know, for other ones, uh, other uh, variables in the model. Well, how do I address, you know, indigeneity in a, you know, a structural model then? Well, really it's kind of accomplished through um, control variables, you know. So if we think there's some omitted variable, and the omitted variable that you think might be causing this would probably have a relationship to uh, the IVs but also the DVs in this. So in this instance maybe it had nothing to do with did you adapt the service you know maybe it had uh, everything to do with just service expectation level. So in that perspective what you're talking about really is is did my expectation uh, 
uh, influence uh, adapt yeah absolutely you know because if I, I think that you're going to if I have a high level of expectation it'll positively influence me thinking they're going to adapt the service and does that service expectation influence you know delight if it's high level sure possibly word of mouth yes and so what you're going to do is you're going to include really control variables that you think might be those admitted uh, uh, variables that are possibly the you know an influence that's you know confounding if you will your model uh, and you can have multiple uh, control variables in there so going back to our uh, baseball example uh, we think attendances uh, of practices could lead to performance but maybe we wanted to include a control variable of like coaches ability because coaches ability you know how good a coach they are might influence how many practices they attend but it also might influence performance of games too um, and then you may even include additional control variables which is the interest level of the player you know if they really love baseball they probably will attend more practices and they're interest level will probably you know directly influence how they perform in in games as well and so you're using these kind of control variables to kind of hold constant some of these other uh, possibly omitted variables that could um, have a uh, you know a bias of your results and and in that way the control variable now controls or has an influence to all the dependent variables in your model um, and, and you're addressing not just kind of it piecemeal but you're assessing it as a whole uh, and then control variable 2 gives some more validity to the results that you're finding between your IVs and your DVs so if you're looking for more information about control variables or uh, specifically more about sim and how to run these different analyses I'd encourage you to check out my book applied structural equation modeling using Amos uh, and as always uh, if you saw a value in the videos uh, here I would ask that you would like and subscribe um, I hope you all have a great week good people